My son killed a family friend when he was 17. The family friend had been molesting him from 7 to 12 before finding other boys. When he was 17, he ran across this man who propositioned him for sex and my son lost it. He stabbed him in the heart with a knife and he had a heart attack and died. He did 8 years for manslaughter. His life is a wreck. He got out and wanted to go to college and get a job. College was too much for him because he was around kids his age who were more concerned about what to do on Saturday night whereas he was worried about his parole officer showing up with 8 armed cops at our house. He completed his degree in psychology and still couldn't find a job. He couldn't even find a job at organizations that help ex-convicts because he couldn't pass a background check. He started to be unhinged and committed suicide. And he died believing that he did something wrong and to have deserved the life that he got. Are you all my personal dreams? Not me but my mother was in a relationship with a serial killer, pedophile. In the early to mid 80s my mom started dating this guy. She already had my older sister with another man, new boyfriend was a doting stepdad. They lived in Las Vegas, my mom ran Kino and he was a card counter. She'd help disguise him because he was blacklisted from most casinos for the aforementioned card counting. I came along, they continued to be the happy little super dysfunctional family until the FBI grabs my mom from work and interrogates her for hours about him. He's a rapist, pedophile, murder, my mom didn't know. She dabbled in low-level criminality but not that stuff, splits town with us kids, gets back with older sister's dad. I grow up not knowing this until I'm 14 and my parents divorce and dad asks for a DNA test for me and I'm floored. Your dad isn't your dad it's actually this evil man who's on death row. My mom's a huge drunk and drug addict she can't even speak to me about this without a full-fledged mental breakdown, so everything I know is spotty. She passed away 4 years ago, I'm going through her stuff and find some letters from the History Channel contacting her to participate in a documentary about him. One thing that chills me to my core, he used to call her his first victim's name during sex. She swore she never knew until after the fact and I believe her. My uncle raped and murdered his disabled daughter and tried to frame someone else so he could collect insurance money. He got away with it for almost 20 years. One day, I get a phone call from my dad saying that we should expect the family name in the news and why. She was mid-teens and developmentally disabled. He tried to frame a supposed hitchhiker serial killer in the 80s. Tried to follow the same patterns. He was caught via a cold case study. Early tests had some of his DNA on her, but protection was used during the rape and he had a passable alibi at the time. When some of the DNA was retested, they found more clues linking my uncle to the murder, and after checking with said alibi, the person who gave it confessed that they lied. The moment the police came for my uncle, he cried and thanked them for catching him. He admitted the whole thing right away and said that he couldn't handle her anymore, took out the life insurance policy, and did as he did. He is in jail for life and getting at least part of what he deserves there. He has been disowned I literally every member of the family, and two of his nephews have changed at least part of their name that was from his. One of my cousins is a killer. Dude was a teenager when, for some unknown reason, he decided to kill his parents and siblings. I can't say his name, so let's call him John. It was early morning, around 3, and the father was out working the graveyard shift at the one gas station in town. John had sat awake all night to make sure everyone was sound asleep. He took a shotgun that he got for his birthday, and crept down the hall to his little brother and sister's room to make sure they were asleep. Satisfied, he ventured into his mother's room, put the gun against her temple, and shot her. The blast woke up his siblings, and, turning around, he shot his brother as he ran out of his room. After making sure he was dead, he found his sister hiding in the closet and killed her too. To complete his mad fantasy, John drugged the bodies one by one into the living room and left them in an unceremonious pile. He then called his dad, crying on the phone saying the house had been robbed. His dad left work and drove as fast as he could to get home and see if his family was safe. As he burst through the front door, John shot him almost point-blank in the chest, and he died soon after. Around 7.30 that same morning, he called the police to report the murders. According to family, the cops found him sitting on the couch. Watching cartoons and eating a bowl of cereal, still bloody from moving the bodies. It's been a few years now, and the only reason he's given for doing it was that, it just felt like the right thing to do. My great aunt was dating this guy and this guy really wanted to have sex with her. 
It was 1930s Italy in a remote town sex before marriage even to a fiancé basically made you an instant town slut. Anyway he promised to marry her if they did and she said yes. Well a few days later she sees him flirting with another woman, so she goes home grabs her father's gun and kills him in the streets after luring him in. She only got a few years in prison and moved to Toronto a year later. Happily married with five kids. Ex-fiancé of one. Seven years together he started doing meth without me knowing five years and two kids in. Tried to get him help when I found out left him because he refused it. They caught him in his victim's car, he confessed 12 days into his trial. Got life plus 10. Said he wanted to know how it felt to kill someone. I'm raising our two kids. They don't know yet, don't plan on telling them until they're old enough. Kills me that they will have to live with a burden like that. It's massively unfair, they certainly don't deserve it, and neither did the victim or his family. Off the meth, he was the type of person that would help the homeless, generous, outgoing, excessively intelligent and ambitious. How heavy drugs can change people into monsters? When I was 10 or 11, my younger brother and I were visiting our grandparents. Hanging out in the hotel, we were told that our mother had passed and our dad was going to jail. It took a while to realize what happened. I got the full story when I was 15. Dad was sleeping. Mom tried to suffocate him with a pillow, he ended up switching it around onto her, resulting in her death. According to newspaper articles, he hid her body in the woods and according to the police, they would not have found the body unless my dad told them. He was sentenced to like 15 years in prison. He got out of prison five years ago or so, gets caught up in the pharmaceutical drugs, which led to harder things and ends up getting some heroin with fentanyl laced in it, and odds. I turned out okay? I have a hard time expressing feelings in my relationship, but my fiancé loves me and works with me. These stories are shared by netizens on the internet. Although this video uses the most relaxing background, it tells the heaviest story. Each of us has our own difficulties to overcome, just hope that the world is getting better and better. Thanks for watching.